Skymax Tech Tip, 10 Common Mistakes Users Make When Dispensing Light Curable Adhesives. Common mistakes are often made when setting up a system to dispense light curable adhesives. Understanding the potential problems that can arise and following best practices will help reduce problems in your dispensing process. Mistake number one, using incompatible materials. Materials used in the construction of the dispensing system should be compatible with the light curable adhesive being used. Metal parts and fittings should only be 300 series stainless steel. Other metals can cause the adhesive to polymerize. Plastic materials that are compatible with many light curable adhesives include polyethylene, polypropylene, Teflon, nylon, and acetals. Other plastics may be attacked by the adhesive. Mistake number two, using transparent fluid lines. Black or opaque plastic fluid lines, not transparent ones, should be used to ensure an adhesive is not exposed to ambient light, which may cause the adhesive to polymerize. Mistake number three, trapping air bubbles in fluid lines. Air bubbles may become trapped in fluid lines when an empty adhesive container is removed for a replacement in a dispensing system. To avoid this problem, purge the fluid line after refilling or replacing the empty container. Maintain only the line length necessary to transport the fluid from the reservoir to dispense point to facilitate the purging process. Mistake number four, using pour-in pressure pots versus drop-in pressure pots. For lower viscosity fluids, less than 500 centipoise, that release air bubbles naturally, pour-in or drop-in pressure pots can be used. For fluids that do not release air bubbles naturally, drop-in pressure pots are recommended. Dymax recommends the use of a 10-gallon drop-in pressure pot for adhesives with viscosities up to 25,000 centipoise. For adhesives with viscosities greater than 25,000 centipoise, or where pressure exceeding 30 pounds per square inch is required for dispensing, RAM-style pail pumps are recommended. Mistake number five, applying excessive air pressure. The application of excessive air pressure, greater than 30 pounds per square inch, to pressure pots may cause air to dissolve into the adhesive. When this pressure is alleviated, either when the pressure pot is opened or the fluid is dispensed, this dissolved air may come out of the solution in the form of air bubbles that become trapped in the adhesive. To maintain appropriate pressure and prevent the formation of air bubbles in the adhesive, use larger ID fittings and tubing, minimize tubing length, fully open the dispense valve, and use a shorter and larger ID dispensing needle. If none of this is effective, and pressure of 30 pounds per square inch or greater is still needed, a RAM-style pail pump is recommended. This type of pump applies force directly to the adhesive in the pail via a follower plate, allowing for very high pressures without air. Mistake number six, using long and narrow fluid lines. Generally speaking, the shorter and wider the fluid line, the better. A fluid line diameter of 3 8 inch is desirable. The longer and narrower the line, the more air pressure is required to transfer the fluid to the dispense valve. This can result in a slow flow rate and the need for high pressure to move the material with the unfortunate result of air bubble formation. Mistake number seven, using high shear pumps and valves. The use of pumps that produce shear, such as gear pumps, is not recommended for use with light curable materials. Shear occurs when the adhesive is caught between two tightly fitting, moving metal parts, which can cause the adhesive to polymerize and clog the system. Simple pressure pots with pneumatic and RAM-style pail pump systems are recommended. Mistake number eight, using positive displacement valves. Positive displacement valves should be tested for compatibility with light curable materials prior to their incorporation into a dispense system. Contact the manufacturer for further guidance in selecting an appropriate valve to dispense a light curable adhesive. Mistake number nine, using a vacuum to remove air bubbles. A vacuum should not be used to remove air bubbles from a light curable material. The use of a vacuum may remove constituents from the adhesive, altering its performance and or reducing its shelf life. 
Mistake number 10, using excessive vacuum suck back on syringe dispensers. Caution should be taken to only apply the amount of suck back or vacuum pressure needed to prevent adhesive drip following dispense. Excessive vacuum pressure may pull the plunger out of the syringe barrel or suck air into the syringe, creating bubbles. For more information on dispensing systems for light curable adhesives, visit Dimex.com. For technical assistance, please contact the Dimex Equipment Support Team.